Hey traders, happy Sunday and welcome back to another video here where we take a look at some of my favorite trading setups for the week ahead. And I always like to start these videos by showing you some real trades, some skin in the game, some actual positions on live brokerages. Here's where I'm currently at. I've got two trades open on this account. Uh, we are talking a long position on USDJPY and another long position on NZDCHF. The reason I do that is because when I was a new trader and I was just searching around YouTube trying to find my way as a trader, I always wanted to see traders showing live accounts and it wasn't very frequent that you would find it. Now, of course, I'm not out here making 10 grand a day or anything like that, uh, but I do pretty well in my trading overall and I like to show live transparency on my on my uh, channel. So what I'm going to give you is trade setups that I'm actually interested in myself going into this week and we'll break down some common currency pairs you guys might be interested in as well. Let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so first thing I wanna show you is dollar yen and a little bit of a reaction to NFP last week. Why did the jobs numbers come out really hot, but the dollar sank? A little bit of a weird one, right? Well, it is, but it also, there was a little bit of rationale to it. So if we take a look at the two factors, unemployment rate, right, which is the percentage uh, number, and then the actual number of jobs that were created. Uh, and in these two categories, you know, there was some great jobs numbers that came out. We had a beat in the expectation of new jobs created, but this number kind of missed, which, um, you know, is not necessarily by itself enough to just absolutely tank the dollar like it did. Uh, it was a little bit of a weird report, I'm not going to lie, but uh, it wasn't just like a, a absolute perfect report. Everything was amazing. Uh, you know, everything looked perfect and the dollar uh, went down. It was kind of a mixed report uh, that ultimately led the dollar to retrace a little bit. So I had actually picked up dollar yen long after the FOMC uh, meeting on Wednesday. I picked it up long during some of the volatility, came down to a level that I liked, and my entry was quite beautiful. We picked up uh, 49,000 units, which is not a huge position. I kept it kind of small just because it was a, a very news heavy week. But going into this week, we'll see if we can find some dollar rallying opportunities. Now, going into this week, I do still have my dollar yen position. I'm looking at this thing from a longer term perspective. I like the higher lows. This thing to me looks like it's in a healthy uptrend and any retracements, I was looking for a buy. So I got that buy but I will have to be out of my dollar yen idea should we break underneath and start tagging into, uh, you know, below the 145 mark, I've got my stop loss in, in place. What I'm looking for here is a continuation of dollar yen uh, and, and several yen crosses, which I'm sure we'll discuss as we go along. Looking for some yen weakness and some of the other uh, crosses to, to continue to, to trend well against the yen, which maybe brings me to another major one we'll talk about. How about euro yen? Take a look at euro yen. Caught a nice rally off of support, and I'm liking the ways the, uh, the the way these things are moving recently. The yen cross is looking very nice for, in my opinion, some trend continuation moves. Uh, Euro yen actually looking pretty dang attractive. Now, the Euro is not my favorite per se, but in, in terms of comparing it against the yen, uh, I like it long. Now, I'll, I'll take a look at it uh, on the score chart summary here from the edge finder. Um, and let's see if we can find anything. So Euro Yen actually gets a buy reading, which is very, very interesting. If you're not familiar with the tool that I'm looking at, this is the A1 Edge Finder. It is our software that helps us scan for better trade setups in the market. And you know what this thing does is it takes a look at all these different categories, GDP growth, inflation, it compares these economies so that you don't have to go crunch all that data and go dig around the internet to find that information. You get it summarized and punched out in the form of a simple bias and score for you. So usually what I'm looking for is I'm looking to trade things long that are coming up on the top end of this, and I'm looking to short things or be on the sell side of things that are on the inverse. So we had a bit of a shift in sentiment. Some of you guys have may have noticed, you know, we've been incredibly bearish on things like uh, gold and the pound. Well, I think it's time we take a little closer look at gold, which actually didn't necessarily go bullish for me, but it switched off of a massive sell bias and sort of shifted into just a, you know, it went from strong sell to sell. Part of the reason for that was that, again, that tick up in unemployment rate that we saw. So 3.7%, this was an unexpected rise in unemployment, which of course uh, is, is in some ways arguably a bullish thing for gold. Why? Because of course gold rallies on fear. And that's what we saw this week. We saw gold really catch a strong rally and close, by the way, you guys, it closed outside of resistance. 
you know, not what I would have expected. In fact, I would have thought we would have gotten more reaction in this area. I was wrong. So as we break above this, the question is, hey, you know, are we going to see a little bit of a short term run to the upside on gold? I'm certainly not looking to sell it anymore. It's failed at the level that I was thinking it could be a nice sell at until we see some failure or something like that. There's no selling here for me on gold. Um, you know, and maybe short term, this thing has some room to run. This was a really impressive start to move. And the fact that we were able to close out on a Friday, nonetheless, above resistance, to me looks like you might get a little bit of a push here on gold. And now you have to ask yourself, well, where could that rally go to? If you're talking about an expansion move up to 1725, you've got plenty of room to potentially trade this thing for the week ahead. Now again, I'm not saying, you know, I'm necessarily bullish, but for the for the for the traders, for the more active positions uh, you know, being placed out there, consider it in terms of like a day trading perspective. If you get momentum intraday and you're, you know, finding those dips and and you know, you find an opportunity where you know, you can kind of trade this thing zone to zone. I think there's a solid possibility that there's a deeper retracement coming back on the gold market. Now, I'm I'm saying this cautiously because in the grand scheme of things, we still have a very strong downward trend. But Friday was a good example of the first candle of a potential reversal. I'm saying potential because this thing could just, you know, find its way up to here and then find major sellers off the higher time frames. But we're not quite there yet. That leaves plenty of room for day traders, for short-term swing traders that may be wanting to trade this thing zone to zone. So again, I'm not necessarily saying I'm bullish. I'm just saying I think we have room to expand higher. Uh, that would be my opinion on gold going into this week. Uh, and part of the reason for that is again the dollar really really tanking and and if you take a look at here's your dollar index by the way you can see putting in lower highs and with that failure on Friday off of the jobs numbers it just makes you question how you know how strong is this dollar rally if we're able to erase that much of a move on subpar or, or mixed sentiment on news right so something we're going to have to watch closely I'm not bearish on the dollar for me to be bearish on the dollar we need to see inflation coming down we need to see um, you know the Fed potentially back its tone from its hawkishness that it's had recently. And we probably need to see breaks up a, a below structure. Is that possible? Sure. But we'll watch for the signs and we won't make a judgment call until we start seeing the indicators that we need, right? Breakouts, reversal patterns, uh, fundamentals to shift. We're not quite there yet. So I'm not looking to short the dollar. I'm not looking to do that. Uh, but I'm not necessarily super incredibly bullish on the dollar either. Let's go back to the edge finder and see what we are actually looking to trade because we've talked a lot about some of the things that we regularly talk about, the dollar here. I like the indices. I like the indices for the first time in a while here. And last week, we saw a nice nice push on several, several major indices. We saw the S&P 500 start poking up into buy territory on the edge finder. You've got UK 100, US 30, German 30, all of these looking very healthy. And I wanted to pull this up and show you guys, actually, I was working on this Friday in the office. Take a look. We just added the new features to the S&P 500. Now, this is a big deal because, of course, you know, a lot of traders love trading the indices. They love trading, um, you know, gold. They love trading all those different assets, but they can be confusing. So we've actually added in fundamentals plus explanations and breakdowns for each one of these major assets. So take a look at this. So you've got the, the S&P 500 poking into uh, buy territory. Now the COT data, not quite super optimistic, though look at this, we had a little bit of a shift in the positive direction from institutional traders getting long the S&P 500. Still a net short position out there, but a change in the making potentially here. You take a look at seasonality, the month of November and December is historically positive months for the S&P 500. GDP growth, we saw some healthy numbers there. Inflation, we saw some signs of it curbing. That's positive. You have interest rates. Um, you know, of course, interest rates, a little bit of a, a touchy subject there for the stock market. Um, but then, you know, overall still getting a nice, healthy overall uh, buy signal. And you see the Dow, US 30, also getting a nice buy signal. And this one trending even nicer than the S&P. So take a look at with me. We'll take a quickly look at uh, S&P 500. So 
yeah, the daily chart doesn't look beautiful, but look at the, look at the four hour chart and you can kind of see we've been at least putting in some lower high, sorry, some higher lows, right? Some new highs been formed, broke out of this area. It's not the most bullish chart ever, but what about the US 30? The US 30 looks pretty healthy. Look at the Dow, you can see a nice upward trajectory on this asset and you can actually see we're holding this trend line very well. We held support last week, although it was a bit ugly, you can still see we poked down into this area and found buyers. Now, you ask anybody on the street, hey, are you buy, are you bullish on the stock market? They're gonna look at you funny because they're gonna say every indicator is that we're going into recession. Why in the world would you buy the stock market? But here's the thing, right? A lot of times some of the best stock market rallies happen within bear markets, right? There might be a few week stretch where you catch an incredible bullish run. I'm not saying the stock market is you know, headed right back to the highs. I'm just saying that right now we're seeing some clues that there might be a bit of a relief rally coming towards the end of the year, something that I'm looking to try and be a part of. So I'm getting long, I'm buying stocks, I'm buying um, the indices, I'm looking to trade this thing. For me, any retracement this week into 32,000 for Dow, looking at US 30, I'm looking to get long. The S&P 500 too, but also NAS 100, which, you know, probably the weakest, actually definitely the weakest of the indices. This one, actually, I'm not as interested. It's it's very interesting to me. We're seeing the divergence between the NASDAQ and the US 30, right? The Dow, the Dow holding strong. Of course, this is the Dow 30. It's 30 of the biggest companies. And this one looks very, very strong going into this week. So, you know, like I said, I'll be looking to get long myself. Uh, of course, if I take any trades, you guys will see it inside of the Discord. Remember, the Discord is currently 40% off for our Black Friday sale. I don't want you guys to miss it. So click the link down below in the description. You can see all the trades being taken. Like I said, trying to stay transparent on YouTube. I do show all of my trades. I share them inside of my journal here inside of the trade alerts section. If you want access to that, get it 40% off and bundle it with the edge finder. If you want the edge finder and you've been meaning to get it, now is your chance to get that Black Friday sale for 40% off. So take advantage of the sale, click the links down below in the description, use that promo code YTVIP and you'll be able to get in on everything that we do. Uh, it's real trading. There's no nonsense, no fake stuff, no fake demo accounts, you know, no fake profits. We don't do any of that. It is real traders, real community, real trading software tools that we've worked very hard. It's, it's you know, my life's work as well as my team's, um, you know, career focus to build these amazing tools for traders and to build communities for traders. So I, I know I'm pushing hard on it, but I'm telling you, if you've been thinking about joining the Black Friday sale discount for this year, um, you know, get in with us. It's a it's a one time cost to get access to the Edge Finder, and you can get the Gold membership, which is a one time access to our community. If you're serious about this stuff, you know, stick around with us long term. We'd love to have you in the community. And again, it's a one time purchase if you get the Gold membership or Edge Finder access. So there you go. There's your sales pitch. I know I went heavy on it, but it's because I genuinely believe in the products we sell. I you know, like I said, they are. Um, it's no cap, no nonsense, if you will. So, you know, I do like the indices long. Uh, and if I'm looking at this thing, if I'm looking at, you know, the indices, which one do I want? Well, I still like the Dow. I still like US 30, S&P 500. I'd like to see some bullish price action, uh, but I'm still interested. Another one I've got, I mentioned earlier that I showed you guys my trades. I have dollar yen long, but I also picked out this one, NZD CHF. Picked it up long this week. Let's go take a look at NZD CHF from a charting perspective. And wow, things looking still very, very healthy. So, you know, Swiss Frank, my uh, my my co-host on on Mondays, Ivan, uh, he asked me why I like to trade the Swiss Frank pairs. They can be very choppy. And it's true, but they can also they can also kind of do these choppy trends, which sounds completely nonsense. But what I mean by that is, you know, if I have a loosely trailing stop, some of the Swiss franc pairs, what I like about them is, yes, they will chop, but they'll trend chop. They'll do something like this. Notice how this thing is still trending, although it is so, you know, up, down, up, down, up, down. So anyways, what I like about that is I caught the Swiss franc, uh, sorry, the New Zealand dollar against the Swiss, Swiss franc. I caught it long on a discount uh, as it was doing its choppy thing. And I just said, hey, you know what? I'm in this trade and all I need to know is that I'm gonna stop out if we break the lows. We didn't break the lows, we retested them, but I stayed in the trade and we've rallied since. So 
you know, I've got this trade on, it's running nicely, and this one also provides a positive swap if I'm holding this on my broker. By the way, if you guys are looking to trade on TradingView, if you're in the US, then uh, I, I've got the links down below in the description if you'd like to get access to that brokerage that I use. Um, and if you're outside of the US and you still wanna trade on TradingView, I actually have another partnered broker for people outside of the US, which I will leave the link for that as well in the description. But anyways, looking at this one going into the next week, um, you know, I actually want to try and trail stops here pretty soon. I, you know, would like to get this thing a little tighter. Uh, I just don't love to trade things just right back to break even because it's very possible, just given the nature of NZDCHF, that we do chop back down into this area before potentially heading higher. So I just want to keep that stop relatively loose and just let it do its thing. If it wants to slowly trend up, I will continue to hold this one alongside my other dollar yen trade that I have open. So we're floating 300 bucks on this one. It's nothing crazy, uh, but we would like to see if this thing can just kind of continue to chop higher. Uh, now let's break down why I like this one. Why, why am I bullish on NZDCHF? Kind of a lesser traded currency pair, uh, but let's go look. And we pull up the edge finder, and like I said, the edge finder, pretty much every trade that I take comes through the edge finder. It's how I find the trade setups I like. And what we can see here is that going down the list, we have several factors that give us this plus five. And plus five is uh, just a, a total sum of all of these different categories. So for example, in the COT or commitment of traders data, we see it uh, very, very much a jump. Look at this. So. COT data is actually showing a huge jump in NZD, which is a really attractive thing. So big players getting more long exposure to NZD. Now we compare that to CHF where there is a very heavy short positioning on this asset. We put that together, that gives us a plus one in that category. You take a look at retail sentiment. Well, the retail crowd here is very short on this asset which gets me even more interested in being long because again, we know retail traders tend to be on the wrong side of great moves. Seasonality, we take a look at November, very strong month for the month of November. We're expecting positive outcome for this month. That could change, but so far it seems to be holding well. Nice upward trend as we saw on the chart. GDP growth and interest rates favor New Zealand while inflation and unemployment favor the yen. Kind of the common practice as this, uh, as Japan has a very, very low level of inflation and unemployment. Despite that overall, a bias to the upside and looking to be long in ZDCHF until further notice. So. That's a trade I'm in. Uh, you know, maybe a chance to get into this trade would be a retest here. That's why I don't really want to, you know, move my stop loss right there because I might want to, you know, I want to hold this trade until it's breaking through uh, major structure, not trying to assume the bottom here, uh, or sorry, trying not to to assume it won't, you know, retest a normal area like this. So, you know, that's just a step into a trade that I'm in right now. I like to give you guys that thought process on a, on a position that I'm taking in the moment rather than you know, just talking about it in hindsight, which I don't think is nearly as beneficial. It's so easy to talk, you know, after if I came on here and I showed you just a trade where I picked it up long here, close it out here, uh, and I look like a genius, right? If you only ever show that, that doesn't really mean anything because everyone can catch a good trade here and there. But how do you manage a trade and how do you think through the process of, of a trade like this? How do you stay in a trade like this for max profit, right? That's Those are the things I think you know, the YouTube community needs more of. But anyways, that's a rant for another day. Uh, remember you guys, there is a Black Friday sale going on. All of the information for that will be linked down below in the description. I would really like to meet some of you guys inside of the Discord and get you access to the Edge Finder. My team will happily help you out with that if you have any questions. Thank you very much for tuning in today's video. Have a great trading week, trade safe, and we'll see you next time. See you later.